go from there. Uh, everybody, this is Maurizio Gambarucci. He's the Deputy Director of the Italy America Chamber of Commerce South Central. So Maurizio, the floor to you. Yes, thank you, Jeremy, very much. Uh, good morning to our friends in America. Buon pomeriggio agli amici in Italia. As Jeremy said, I'm Maurizio Gambarucci and uh, with the Italian Chamber of Commerce. We are active in Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. I would like to welcome everybody to the ninth episode, if I'm not wrong, of our webinar series, Challenges and Opportunities in the Post-Pandemic Era, if we, if we ever be in the post-pandemic era <laughs> one day. So, but also we are in the midst of the virtual Taste of Italy trade show in this very week. The trade show virtual started on Monday this week and we land at the end of the following week on Friday 26. So two entire weeks for more than 170 virtual meetings between 25 producers and more than 50 buyers. So thanks everyone for being part of it. The first week, this one here schedule is already fully booked, but some spots are available for buyers for the second one. More details are at tasteofitalyhouston.com. Today, together with the pillar of our webinar series, Jeremy Parson, we have a special guest, Brian Larkey. Hello, Brian. Buongiorno. Founder and CEO of De La Terra Imports. Brian, actually for us, a returning guest. We uh, still remember him uh, being a speaker at Taste of Italy panels, I think in 2019 or 18. So thank you for being back here today and what a journey since then. We'll discuss this theme today, state of the Italian wine trade with Brian Larkey. For questions or comments, please use the Q&A options at the bottom of your screen, which is already open and available. And without any further ado, I'll leave the floor to Jeremy. Enjoy the conversation. Thank you, Marito. And again, Thanks, Marito. there still are, you can still, I mean, I'm so proud of the work we've done, our virtual trade fair. We are connecting people virtually. They're loving it. They're sending wine. They're sending food products. They don't have to come here. We're actually creating this new model, and I highly encourage you to be part of it. I'm part of it. And there's plenty of time. It doesn't have to happen in two days anymore. It can happen over a month. So there's still availability. Uh, I wanna give the floor to Brian as quickly as we can, because we only have him for about a half hour. Uh, um, I, you guys, everybody on this call knows who I am. Everybody on this call knows who Brian is. Uh, uh, I've been writing about Italian food and wine for 20 years. Brian revolutionized the industry with his new model for uh, uh, importing and bringing wine to, to Italian wines in the United States. He's created so many iconic brands. I mean, when you look at his roster, you're like, wow, brand that changed the world, brand that changed the world, brand that got the first 100 score from James Huckling, brand that kept Chianti Rufina on the radar. You know, I mean, just, you just go on and on. But the one thing I'll say introducing him is that uh, he's a lovely, lovely guy who is always generous in sharing his energy with you, his insights, his energy. There's two types of people in the Italian wine business in the United States. People who come up as bullies and ruffians who force their way into selling you wine. And, and then there's people who, like Brian, and he's really the shining example of that, make it a cultural experience and want to share the good vibes and want to share in in our, all, all of our growth. I, I, every time I interact with him, I come away feeling richer, whether we're having dinner and getting buzzed or whether we're on a panel or whatever. He wants, he knows that right, the, all ships rise with the rising tide. And I can't think of anybody more in our business that embodies that spirit. So let's jump to Brian. Brian, we asked you to be on this call today because we wanted to talk about the state of the Italian wine trade beyond the obvious trends that have emerged, uh, retail, obviously, right? Online retail, you know, we've seen this massive shift to retail, but we've also seen all these other problems like disruptions in supply. We've seen, uh, uh, I've seen locally and anecdotally across the country, people try, you know, I can't find my favorite Brunello, so I'm gonna try a new Brunello. We've seen uh, virtual wine events are now the norm. People, I have people telling me they, they want to keep doing virtual because they want to have dinner in their pajamas and they don't want to drive home drunk, right? What, can you just jump in and say what, you know, as the CEO and founder of one of the most innovative companies in Italian wine that's touched 
so many, everyone on this call has drunk a wine that Brian touched in some way or another. What are some of the trends you're seeing in the, in the pandemic era? Innanzitutto, Jeremy Marizio, devo ringraziarvi. Before I even begin, I have to say thank you to both of you, to uh, Marizio Gamburucci for what we're doing today and what you've, you've organized in so many different states. And Jeremy, this is not our first rodeo, as you like to say, <laughs> at the, uh, uh, down, down in Houston. But this is a real, it's a real treat for me because today's call embodies not just what we're going to talk about in a minute, but what we're doing today is a lot of what you just talked about in terms of how do we bring people, how do we engage people, um, and how are things going to, how have things changed? And are we going to go back to where we were or not? We're not going to go back to where we were. Yeah. Nobody wants to. Some people love pajamas. Some people love being able to get engaged like this. We've got 100 people at today's call. Um, that's what we can handle today. And uh, we're going to be able to share a lot more quickly in 30 minutes in this format. And this goes um, as we expand into learning about uh, uh, specifically Italy, Italian vineyards, Italian varietals, where to get them, how to taste them. So um, my hat's off to, to both of you gentlemen today um, and to the people that tuned in because this is really, really the future of what we're going on. Um, I want to begin, and I'm already going to tell you how I'm going to end today. I'm going to begin and end on a note of optimism, high energy optimism. Now, it's hard to think that because Italy just shut down yet again this week, um, you know, all the way through the Easter holidays. Um, what's there to be optimistic about? But uh, I do believe that things, you know, we're, we're really on the cusp um, of getting there. There have been some issues, obviously, in, in Europe with, uh, with vaccines that we've run into. Uh, they've run into over there uh, in, recent, in recent weeks. Um, those will be overcome. Uh, here in the United States, um, uh, we've been told that for the 4th of July, we're going we're gonna to be there. So that's, you know, April, May, June, we're, we're 90 something days out from getting really close to making this better. Um, as I said, just before we, we really started, 90 days is, in some ways, it feels like tomorrow. We can do that. We've already done more than that. We can certainly do 90 days. But um, at the same time, if you're right here and you need to get up above the surface of the, of the water to breathe and you can't quite get there, it doesn't matter how close it is. We mm -hmm. still have to be able to arrive. And so um, my heart and support and everything goes out to uh, all the people in the industry. And we at Dollaterra, together with our wineries in Italy, um, did a, uh, 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 like a, a, like a multi-month um, uh, support program for people in the, in the restaurant industry. Um, and that I think is in, in a way it's, it's all our future, but that's a big part of our future when we're speaking specifically about Italian wines. And, uh, as you mentioned earlier, um, which is obviously when it's going to be on this call, uh, as certain things shut down, other things opened up, right? So mm -hmm. restaurants shut down, retail stores opened right up. Um, some of those retail stores uh, have walls and you can drive out in front, order, and they'll bring it out to your car. Others, uh, you just push a button on your keyboard and it somehow shows up at your house. So it doesn't matter how it's, um, whether it's virtual um, or, or brick and mortar, it all comes to you and it's all essentially virtual, at least today. So that's really been the big shift that we've seen. And in speaking with our uh, producers at uh, our Dollar Terra producers to see what's happening, um, the U.S. in some ways has been a real bright spot because we have been, uh, as a country, uh, we've been one of the leading countries in terms of access to the internet and uh, access to being able to test over the last few decades a lot of these, these um, mechanisms that allow us to work. Um, and I was just talking to a friend the other day and I said, what if this thing hit, you know, eight years ago, right? I mean, we barely got in under the wire with some of the technology and the infrastructure and uh, being as connected as we are. But just, you know, just a few years ago, we wouldn't have been where we are today. Um, and God help us if we still would have modem sounds with that hissing, crackling sound as you're trying to get online. So um, technology really just really brought us to where we are. And difficult as it is, I can't imagine what it would have been like um, had we not had this technology. Um, from an Italian perspective, you know, and I think both you gentlemen will, will agree with me, Italy is by far, it's, it's the most interesting. Okay, I'm a little bit biased. It's the most interesting. It's the most diverse. And it's also the most complicated wine growing country in the world with, uh, how many varietals are you gonna go with 600, Jeremy? Or do you think there's more? How many in Italy? Um, I, you know, <laughs> people, some people say 3000, some people say five, you know, it just depends on how locally you wanna count, you know? Uh, 
but it's every village, another grape variety, another pasta shape, and another dialect, right? I and mean, another dialect. And, and, and yeah, different playing cards when you play Scotta, the whole thing. It's all, it's all <laughs> a bit different. Italy is not so much a country, I like to say it is. It's, it's more of a more of a patchwork that's kind of lightly sewn together um, with all the different regions and languages and, and, and dishes and pasta shapes. Um, and in this case, uh, varietals and wines. So it's, it's incredibly complex and it's a little bit overwhelming. Um, and those are things that really fall through the cracks when we're dealing with something that kind of homogenizes everything in terms of the, uh, the internet. Um, we don't have someone sitting down with us at our table anymore and recommending a list of these, these, all these wines. So for us, and I don't mean us at Dollar Terra, I mean all of us in, in, in this particular industry, we're not selling Chardonnay, Merlot, and Zinfandel, mm -hmm. and Cabernet. We're selling all these varietals. Um, and obviously it's it's not the 80-20 rule, it's more like the 95-5 rule, where 95% of it are things that people are gonna be familiar with. But um, the diversity is in this, in this incredible um, uh, opportunity that Italy offers all of us. And so, that's obviously uh, fallen by the wayside because that takes, in many cases, on-premise restaurants mm -hmm. that are our partners, that are our friends, that are out there to educate, that set themselves apart from everything else with the diversity, not just in terms of the food in the region, but obviously the wines and the, and the varietals. So that's gonna come back though. I, wanted, I said I wanna start and end in the same place. And the place I wanna start and end is optimism. Mm -hmm. And I'm super optimistic. Um, a, that we'll get beyond this and we'll get beyond this relatively quickly at this point after an entire year. Nobody would have guessed it would have been this long. Um, but uh, at the same time, we will get beyond this. And as I, as I said to some friends earlier, you know, this isn't Dresden. You know, there, everything isn't decimated. It wasn't bombed to the ground. We can literally flip switches and make ethical decisions as to how we want to move forward and when. And we'll, we'll get back to it. Um, and we will be... Um, back at this, it looks like, uh, you know, sometime later this summer. So the, the first note of optimism is we will get through this and this is not forever. Um, and the question is what will be like when we get through this and who will be at our side when we get through this? So some people are no longer around. You know, many, many of our friends and colleagues, um, you know, at least for the time being, had to hang it up. They said, this isn't working for me with, with the type of business I was doing at that time. Other people have grown and, 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 and changed their, their approach um, and it's been very successful for them. So um, we will see what comes out of this, but I think in the end, um, we will have uh, a very, very strong industry. Um, those that are able to weather this storm and people in Houston know about storms, but uh, it's, you know, when, when you look at Houston and what's blown in off, off of your coast, um, it comes down to the people. I check in with you after, you know, the latest hurricane or whatever it happened to be. And, uh, and you're like, we're good. We're, we're, you know, we've got issues, but, you know, people are here. We've done some, some dinners together in the midst of some of this stuff. And it's, it's the will of the people. It's the heart and the soul of how people choose to live their lives. And all that is in relation to the economy today. So we can want to do something, but, you know, part of it is, should we? And the other part is, can we? So with the, um, with the current shutdowns and all, it's, it's should we? And as we move forward, it's can we, can we do this? And if we do this, how do we do this? And so as the, the landscape um, has already changed um, and the landscape will continue to change. Um, and it will be very interesting to see who the, who the new players are, who's going to you know, reinvest um, in restaurants. Let's just talk about on-premise restaurants for now. Um, and that's, a, that's one of the places where Italy shines. Italy shines more than Australian restaurants, more than Peruvian restaurants, more than Spanish restaurants, more than French. It's Italy. And it's all about this, you know, this Mediterranean diet and, and, and uh, you know, from the land directly to the table. And Italy shines in that regard. Um, and Americans are in love with Italy. They're in love with Italy. They've been in love with Italy forever. Um, you know, whether it's, whether it's uh, clothing or shoes or art or this cool, you know, lighting that we have around here, it's all Italia, Italia, Italia. Um, and that is really one of the things that we move forward with, I think, is that we have so many ambassadors on behalf of Italy. Um, and uh, you and I have kind of adopted Italy as our, as our, as our, well, nostro paese per noi, come andare a casa. No, it's for us, it's like going home, we go there now, but, our spiritual but, homeland. We were supposed exactly. to be in Israel, but uh, it turned out to be Italy. We stopped <laughs> at Italy. 
on the latest. And let me, Brian, let me jump in. You said so many, there's so much to unpack there. I want to just, and I love the optim. you know, that's another great thing about being around Brian. You always come away optimistic. He's, he's got that and he wants to buy osmosis, not inverse osmosis, but osmosis. He wants to rub off some of that good energy on you. You made such a good point. You know, restaurants in Italy, restaurants are all closed through Easter. And in some parts of Italy, they've been closed for four weeks up until, you know, my buddies in Brescia haven't been able to go out to lunch and no dinner, by the way. Uh, yeah. Four weeks ago, lunch stopped, all restaurant in dining, dining and service. And, you know, we forget how that's going to affect so many small growers who depend on Italian restaurants. Um, and that's going to be a big picture issue going because so many, just like in the United States, so many restaurants aren't going to be there. So many of your favorite trattoria and osteria in the country and whatever, they're just not going to be there. And a lot of those small growers aren't going to have that channel. You, uh, I think that's so important. Um, and by the way, guys, there will be European subsidy money to get to Italy when it's available. And the chamber is going to play a big role in distributing that money. And I want, you know, keep, stay tuned, 2022, we're all going to Italy, people. But you also said something else about restaurants in this country. You know, we, over the last 10 years, kind of it, it mirrors the arc of the blogosphere, right? All of a sudden we have all these wine educators and especially sommeliers working on the floor. I mean, that wasn't true 20 years ago. It started, you know, it's really about the last 15 years that, um, you know, we've lost a lot of the restaurants that championed Italian wine. Really interesting what you said about how, even though I've seen a lot of Italians do really well in retail, and we have to remember too, that Italians never had tariffs. And so that was actually a, helped Italy, I think a little bit, but you no longer have that. I go to my favorite restaurant. I have a glass of wine at the bar. The sommelier tells me about a new grape variety I've never heard of or a new wine. Um, what, Brian, what, and I get, you know, because I'm one of the hosts, I get to be the first one to ask a question. And we're, after this, we're going to open the floor to questions for the last 10 minutes of the call. I want, you know, please uh, type your questions in the chat. Maurizio will, you know, go through the questions and try and consolidate them, et cetera. Brian, what, you know, if you were an Italian winemaker right now, what, you know, what should Italian wineries be focusing on now that they've, you know, they're, they're, faced with this challenge of they don't have that sommelier in New York City or LA or San Francisco um, and to a lesser extent here in Texas that's out there saying, wow, I discovered this wine and it's made using this ancient technique. What, what's going to be the new channel for Italian winemakers to get on, you know, to get on Eric Asimov's radar, you know, to get on you know, when he, when he can't go to the restaurant and that sommelier pour, hey, wow, it's Eric, let me pour you something you've never tasted before. Kind of, I'm, and I'm just generalizing, but, and sorry, Eric, for using you as an example, but I think he'd be cool with that. Definitely cool with that. And, and he's been a, a great educator along the way that's really helped bring things around. What wineries will be focusing on, I think should be, first of all, um, reality. Reality is we're here and we are gonna be here for some time. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the Times, and, and there was a, a great article recently about uh, kind of the future of restaurants and sommeliers. You also mentioned the European subsidy to get people over there. And Europe, Italy in particular, has spent, and wineries, in, you know, specific wineries have spent a ton of money educating Americans on these 600, 3,000 varietals on the regions, um, the individual consortia. There's been a ton of money spent in, on educating and building a group over here. Now, what's happening in that group? Are we still going to have those people in restaurants? Probably not, not so much for a while. That, that's definitely changing. Um, it's gonna take a while before the economy builds up and we can, we can bring in those people, bring those people back to the floor. At the same time, um, I think we're gonna see smaller wine lists. You know, we're not gonna have a 300 wine list. We're gonna have 60 wines on the list or, or, or fewer, whatever they happen to be and not as much diversity. So we're going from everything goes and natural wines and all these new things that are coming in and people are curious and they wanna try. And that goes all the way back to the vineyard, all the way back to the growers, wherever they happen to be. We're seeing wines from you know, the country of Georgia, you know, all this wonderful stuff. Um, and now it's gonna constrict. So that's gonna help Italy in the sense that some of this extraneous stuff is gonna kind of fall back off the radar for a while. Italy is one of the, uh, the largest producer of wine in the world. 
Italy is one of the largest exporters to the United States, period. Um, Italy commands a lot of attention in the United States. And we'll re we, I think there'll be less distractions, um, which will help Italy. Um, obviously, you and I, many of us are for diversity. We're diversity in our lives, we're diversity in our sellers, diversity in our, um, in, in our friendships and the things that we're interested in. That's going to not disappear, but that will be um, that, that will go down. So going back to I um, nostri amici in Italia, sarà tanti anni di it'll be many years of of constriction, I think, which is obvious. The, everything that people are seeing in Italy with closures, with difficulty, with with whether it's economic um, uh, challenges, it, it's the same here, but on but on a grander scale, and in many ways, it's even more complex because every state, every state within 50 states is, um, is a challenge. The other thing to keep in mind, as we're transitioning into um, an opportunity for things to reopen you know, later this summer, at the same time, something that many people don't see, and again, there've been many articles written about this, but we're having problems getting product to the United States. Yeah. You know, our mm -hmm. containers are not shipping, Jeremy. Our yeah. containers, when I say our, I mean American, con or containers coming to the United States. Um, are held up, and it's taking in many cases two plus weeks just to unload a ship, um, and that's new, and that that has to do with where containers happen to be, um, and 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 moving the pieces of the puzzle around between China primarily um, and the rest of the world. So there there's so many challenges: exchange rate and uh, and containers, um, and the 50 different states each one with different laws and rules. But we're going to get through this, and um, I think that in answer to your question for the wineries, pazienza. You know, that we can only move as fast as we can move. And, at the, and behind this, there's a great desire to embrace and to continue to bring these wines back to the United States and get them into our restaurants and get them into our tables. But it's going to take time. It's, uh, I mean, we could have done a whole semi webinar on just the shit logistics. I mean, even changing- <laughs> Nobody would tune in for that. <laughs> Nobody would sign up for that. <laughs> no, right. Even with the weather, I mean, I, I, I've, I'm talking to people who are having trouble getting wine from uh, New York to California because there's such a back, I mean, beyond the container issue, and that's such a good point. I don't want to take up any more time. Maurizio, who, do we have a question from anybody on the floor? There, I see there's questions in the Q&A yeah. and the chat, so if you want to check both. We do, we do. I try to group them in three different categories so far. First one, ask you, Brian, how, what is the best way to sell wine virtually to distributors or restaurateurs? You want all the questions right in right now or any? Yeah, why don't you just do one at a time and yeah. Okay, yeah. so what's the best way to sell it? What was the question, to sell it virtually? To sell virtually, how is the best way to sell virtually wine to distributors or restaurants across the ocean? That's, that's key, okay, so, so, I assume when we say we're selling, this is a question from Italia. We've got uh, producers in Italy like, God, if we can just get our wines into the United States market, maybe we can get them, you know, listed. So it's in, in many ways, um, just to get a listing in an online store, it doesn't cost them, you know, that much to get a listing in there, depending on, on the type of store. So online stores have many, 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 um, many listings. Um, the first thing that you need is obviously, you know, an American importer, American distributor, you have to be able to get the wines in and get them to the various online operations. Now, most retail shops um, have an online component or they still want to be here today. That's where a lot of the business is going. Um, there are national ones. We, we sell a lot of wine with wine.com. They do a great job and they offer everything. You want to get us some of this stuff, we will put it out there. We'll put it onto our, onto our website. And uh, so those type of operations are great. Many of these Places, you know, they're, they're at wine.com, they're thinking the more the merrier, let's put that on our on our list. But there's less curation. So you can get anything you want, but there's, you know, you go to the hardware store and there's 10,000 nuts and bolts and which one are you really gonna pick? And here you're looking at stuff that you can't really touch and feel and taste it. So it's a little more challenging in some ways, but things are available. And that's, that's the flip side of it. So the first thing is getting a national importer, not a national importer to get importation could be just, you know, an individual state, but to find someone, some partner that you can work with to bring things on over to the United States. And then hopefully they are the people that have the contacts in their state with the online folks, because you can't really set that up for Italy. It's too difficult. There, there's pricing, there's availability. A lot of places won't do it if you only have a limited number um, of cases in stock, because it has to be something that's going to work. Um, so there are challenges to that, but that's, that's a great way to go. And for today in the, in the near future, you, you definitely have to be able to play in that arena, I think. Mm -hmm. 
And Marisa, Thank please. Thank you. So uh, following this train of thoughts, do you see any improvements with the U.S. imports regulation anytime soon? What does that mean, U.S. regulation Im uh, imports? I think the, the person who has the question means like if it's going to be easier to approve the labels or the three three system, maybe that's what he's referring to. Okay, so um, I, I, I think I, I think that we've got so many really big issues right now that fine tuning a system that's been around for decades probably isn't on people's minds as their priority of what they're going to fine tune right now. So I, I don't expect there to be any any big changes. I think the three tier system that we have um, between you know importers and and state distributors and state retailers. Um, all the way down the line is um, here to stay for, for the foreseeable future. Um, and I think we, in terms of some things are easier, getting label approvals and stuff. Um, it's all online now. It's, you know, when, when things are moving, it's, it's relatively efficient. Um, so I don't think it's any, any less efficient today other than everything is because not everybody's going into an office and it depends how well they are now working offline. But I think our system is, it's not our biggest challenge right now. And I think it'll probably stay um, get get used to it. Learn to work with what we have today, because I think we have uh, bigger fish to fry in the meantime. For our administrators that are working hard to keep this moving. And yeah. Maritza, I think we have time for one more. Again, guys, we have a hard stop at the half hour. Yes, not a so problem. One more question, and thank you everybody for being here. Someone is asking. Lars actually is asking the impact on smaller producers, especially in emerging territories and market like the south of Italy. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's heartbreaking. And that is, that, that's one of the biggest challenges because people are not able to get on an airplane and fly out here and introduce themselves. Wine is still, it's, it's, a, it's we're, we're here telling stories. We're educating and teaching and telling stories. We're telling stories about a place, about a varietal, about how that interacts with the food and the pasta and whatnot of that region. And we're here to introduce personalities and people's history and why are they doing this? And without the opportunity to really travel and do that, it's very, very difficult. Um, you don't see the, you know, the, the chairman of the board of General Motors running around and introducing himself to, to consumers. Would you like to try my car? But, you know, in the wine industry, it's, it's, it's kind of the way it's been, which is kind of funny because we all want to protect the environment and no one is boring bigger holes in the ozone layer than winemakers are. Flying. We've got great organic, <laughs> this biodynamic vineyard, but we're going to get on an airplane and go taste some wines with some people face to face. It's one of the conundrums that we, that we have in the, in the industry. And I think that we're getting away from that and doing more with Zoom. And uh, I think that that will help, getting back to the question, that will help the small growers. The, 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 in many ways, it, it will give us now a legitimate opportunity to stand in front of people um, on, on the screen and be able to talk to them, get something in their hands, taste with them. And I think for small growers, that is really key. It's all about building relationships. And in this country, again, it's not the producer um, connecting necessarily with the, with the final consumer. There's so many steps in between. It's really the, the producer connecting with the sales people, the importer, the distributor in that market that they're going to feel connected. So when they have an opportunity to present something, they're going to connect in their mind with that grower, that varietal, that region, something that they, that they personally have been able to connect with. Because each one of those people at the distributor level has many, many points of contact in, in, in this country. And those are the people that are, in a sense, they're the gatekeepers. They're the ones that decide kind of what moves forward. It's way too difficult to go from a producer, or excuse me, from somebody in their home that you know, is envisioning some great wine to, to match with their meal to go out all the way to Italy and find that individual bottle. So we're dealing with um, a multi-stage system here in the United States. Um, it's a big country, you know, we've got 50 different states. We've got a lot of diversity and there's pros and cons that go along with that. But I think it's important to understand and be realistic with what we're dealing with today so that if we can understand it, then we can really begin to perfect it for the individual um, small grower. And it's not just small growers, it's everybody. I mean, we're all dealing with this today. Yeah. Um, and as we, as we wrap this up, I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, uh, Maurizio, I'll let you and, and Jeremy um, tie this up. But I really want to thank the Chamber of Commerce because it's not the Chamber of Belle Arti, it's commerce. And yeah. you guys are really out here um, pulling people together, talking about difficult issues, um, and uh, you're not just saying, hey, you know, we're going to put things on pause for, for a year. No, you're out here, you're working even harder now to pull these things together. Um, we appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, and on behalf of the reason I think the Dollar Terra is here, we're looking so strong moving forward is because of our team. We've got great producers. We've got an amazing team in the United States. So I want to wrap up by thanking um, all the people at Dollar Terra for that, that, that we work on every day. We've actually, in, in some ways, become a tighter team over this. So, grazie mille, boy.
And, and before you go, just to end, thank you so much, Brian, uh, and for the kind words. Uh, to end on a, a note of optimism, kind of echoing what you said, you know, when we're 90 days away from our reopening, Europe will reopen yeah, at some point. Th what's going to be interesting is when everything's open, the, the market won't be saturated anymore. And there'll be a lot of opportunity, especially outside of the major centers. It's not going to be New York, San Francisco, and LA anymore. It's going to be Houston. It's going to be Tulsa, which is a city I'm really interested in. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting time for Italian winemakers to when we can get back moving around. And there's going to be a lot of opportunity to go to Italy. Uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for Italians to get government money to come here. There'll be a whole new market for us to explore. And I think we can be optimistic about that, echoing Brian. Brian, thank you. So we're out of time today, guys. You guys all know how to get in touch with us. Write us, contact us. We want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear what you are interested in. And like Brian said, the Chamber of Commerce is always here for everybody in the Italian wine industry. We're all about building community. So thank you, Maurizio. Thank you, Brian, for your time today and your insights, always invaluable. And uh, man, I just look forward to when we'll get to have that glass of uh, Sancho Mesa in person. So be well, everybody. Be safe and stay in touch. Stay in touch. Thank you. So grazie, well. grazie, Maurizio. Thank grazie you very much. Grazie. 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 Graz